Um, question number 15 reads, can you differentiate nominal GDP from real GDP, okay? So what you need to understand is that nominal GDP uh, measures GDP using uh, the current year prices, okay? You're using current year prices. That, that, that's all what's there under the GDP. So the, both the quantity of the goods and services produced times the prices are of the same year, actually current year. But the real GDP uh, measures the, 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 the level of production using the base year prices, okay? It uses the base year prices. Now, what do we mean by base year? A base year is the year of reference, okay? Some previous year, some some year in the past, yeah. So that is what is there. So the, the, that's the main difference between the two. Uh, nominal GDP measures GDP at current year prices, but uh, real GDP measures GDP at base year prices. Okay. Okay. For each of the following, can you compute? Okay, a basket contains twenty apples, right? Eh? and uh, 10 oranges okay there is some basket with 10 print apples and 10 oranges so the question of the day is for each year can you compute okay can you compute the cost of the basket can you compute the cost of the basket what you are given is see you are given the quantities right for each year mm -hmm. you are given the quantities and the, the prices are here so you can see that for 20 for two, 2000 uh, for 2000 how you can calculate the cost of the basket it will be the quantity for example for apple it will be 20 times the, the price for apple in 2000 was what then right plus the, in the basket again you can oranges they were 10 times the 15 okay 15 like that when you add that that is the cost of the basket is that okay Please come again. so the cost of the basket shall be basically the sum uh the summation of the quantity times the the price okay quantity times the price so quantity was what was it 20 apples that is what was given in the basket and 10 oranges, then the prices are these that are given here. So to, in 2000, we had 10 mangoes, actually we had 20 apples, times the price for apples was what? Was 10, you get that? Plus the oranges, they were 10 times 15, the price of oranges. This one is for prices, this color. Did you get that? You are summing up, you are adding up everything. That is the cost of the basket. Okay, the quantity times the price. How much was that times the price of each unit? Okay. Okay. Did you get that? Yes, I did. Okay. Which this is 200, this is 150, and this gives us 350, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. For so that's. Sorry? I mean, for the year 2000. Yes, the cost was uh, years. Then for the other years, you can still repeat the same. Uh, 20 times 11 now, that's for 2001, plus 10 times what? Times 15. Just like that, you keep on until you finish all of them, okay? That is how to answer the first question. Did you get it? Yes, I have. The CPI using 2000 at the base year now. The CPI uh, is consumer price index. So in short, what we mean is that you are using the prices for what? For 2000, that is what you mean when you say 2000 is a base year. In everything that you do, you'll be calculating the quantities. You'll be using the current year uh, quantities, but, but the prices that you'll be using are for, the, for 2000 in each calculation. So take, for example, for the year 2000, there will be no change as much because 
uh, you have the quantity 20 of apples times 10 plus it. Uh, the quantity for oranges was 10, right? Times 15. This is the same uh, CPI for what? For 20, for 2000. You get it, right? Eh? Which is the consumer price, the consumer price the index. Consumer price index mm -hmm. for 2000. Yeah, so what you do first, you get the cost. So it is the price, okay? It is the price of that year, that year. The price of that year, uh, sorry, the, 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 the costs. Yeah, the cost of that year divided by the cost of the base year. Yeah, so again, you find that the base year, so here you have 3,000, right? Or 350. For, this is the cost for 2,000, right? You divide yes. that by again the same cost for two thousand, so it will be three fifty divided by three fifty, and you get what you get one times hundred, so you just get hundred, hundred percent. That is the the CPI. Remember the CPI how, yesterday. How, how are we multiplying by hundred? Yeah, the CPI it, it measures inflation rate, the level at which the prices oh. are increasing. So we are expressing the it as a rate. Yes. Okay. So then we go for two zero one at least to make more sense now when you go to two zero one. For two zero one, you get the cost. It will be twenty times eleven, right? Plus yeah. ten times fifteen. What do you get as the cost? This is the cost for. Oh, sorry. For. <clears throat> We are getting 2,000, the CPI for 2,000, for 201 now, not for 2,000. So for 201, what will happen is you'll be using the quantity, the current year quantity of which we have, the quantities are fixed, times the, the price now for 2,000, you get. We are in the 2,001, but you'll be using the prices for, for 2,000, that is what it means, yeah, to get the, C, the, the CPI. Did you get that? Hello. Hi, can you get me? Yes. So That's where I can think. get you. We are the, okay. the question there. We are using the the base of uh, the CPI from 2000, isn't it? Yes. So in 2001, it's going to be the price of the basket, which was 370, mm -hmm. divided by 350. Yes. Okay. So yes, 350 divided by 350, which is 100. Mm -hmm. Yes. But now no, for, two, for, two, for sorry? 2001. Yeah, for 2001 yeah, now. <laughs> So for 2001, the formula will be, you'll be summing up, right? The quantity times the price for 2000 in everything. All that divided by the quantity times the price for two uh, for 2000 here. Uh, what, what do I do? Okay, let me explain here yeah, so that I don't confuse something. No, I understand. Can you? It's a quantity times the price for 2001 uh -huh. over the yes. quantity from, the summation of the quantity to the price of 2000. Yes. Because so, 2000 so is that, Exactly. Yeah, you've, 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 you've actually gotten it. So that, that's what is there. <clears throat> so it is actually the real GDP divided by the nominal GDP. So, so, so now, listen, how you get the, the real GDP? The real GDP, I said, you are just multiplying the quantities times the, the prices of the base year, okay? 
then when it comes to the nominal GDP, it is the quantity over the prices of that very year. Okay. So let's say, <clears throat> so let, 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 let's, let's say for 2000, for 2000, what is the, the nominal GDP for 2000? It will be this one. For, for 201, sorry. The nominal GDP for 201 will be 20 times 11, right? You're using the, yes. for the nominal uh, times uh, 10 times uh, 15, right? This is the nominal uh -huh. GDP for 20. What is the nominal GDP? So it's coming to 370. 370? Yes. Yeah. Okay, 370. Okay, so this is 370. Nominal GDP. Yeah. Then you need to calculate the real GDP now. So the real GDP, we use the prices for 2000. So 20 times the price for 2000 is 210 plus 10 times what? 15 like that. What do we get as the real GDP you now? That's the real GDP. Okay. What is the real GDP? <laughs> 200 plus 150, right? It should be 350. Is it? Hello? Hello. Sorry, Aaron. Which which year is this? This is uh, this is uh, for the year to to two thousand. <coughs> for the year two thousand, yes. It's three fifty. Okay. Well, look at. Let me explain again. I said number one for the nominal GDP. It is the quantity times the price of the same year. So since we're in 2001, it will be times the prices of 2001, right? Hello? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? I'm not receiving the feedback. Hello? Karen. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me now? Hi. Are you able to hear me? Yes, I can get you. Mm -hmm. I was saying. Yes, I can hear you. The, the nominal GDP for, for 201, it is quantity times the prices of 201. The prices of 201, that is nominal GDP, right? 370. Then now, the real GDP yes. for 2001, it is the real GDP for, same, for the same 2001. You will use the prices of the base year, same quantities. It's only that they are fixed that these same quanti these quantities, right? they are the same for each year. Okay, maybe that, that's how you should get it. This, the, the quantities you have, you have been given, they are fixed mm -hmm. for all for, from 2000 up to 2000. So just know that the quantity for 2001 is still 20, okay? Mm -hmm. So 20 times now the price, the quantity for mm -hmm. Apple is still 20, but the price in 2000, the base year was what? 10 what? You get it, right? Plus the, the, the quantity mm -hmm. for, for oranges was 10 in 201 times the, the price in 201 was what? Or in two in 2000, you use the price of 2000 for real GDP, that's what I'm saying. Well, 15. Yes, 15. So when you multiply it, you found the 350, right? Okay. <laughs> now to find the, <coughs> mm -hmm. 
that that is to find to, that is to how you find the, the the real GDP and the but to find the the, the 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 CPI itself, you you do this. You say nominal GDP. Sorry, it is actually nominal GDP divided by the real what? Real GDP. You get that? Nominal GDP divided by the real GDP times hundred. Nominal what? Nominal GDP divided by the real GDP to give you the CPI, which is also called the GDP deflator. It will give you the deflator, or which is the same as CPI. So your nominal GDP is 370 divided by 3 what? 350 times what? Times 100. 350. What do you get? 100. What do you get? 105. 105%, right? You multiply. 105. You multiply it by 100, right? 105%, okay. right? Uh -huh. This yes. is a CPI now, minus 100. It's actually 105.71. OK, so it's 106. So 106 minus, you should always minus what, 100 should always subtract 100. You want to see whether the price is increased or reduced. So what do you get? You you find the, the difference of what, 6%, right? Six. Okay. 106 yes. minus 106%. The interpretation is that the inflation rate, the inflation rate change was 6%, which means that the price is increased by what? By 6%. Did you get that? The price is increased by what? By 6%. Are you following? Yeah. So so every answer that you find, you should subtract the 100. OK. We will not do, we did for 2001. We have done for 2001. Uh, OK, let's skip for 2002. You can do it at your own time. Let's do 2003 again. So do, let's start with nominal GDP. The nominal GDP for 2003 now. It is still 20 times 13. You use 2003 prices, by the way. You're following, right? 10 times 15. Yes. Right? What, what is the nominal GDP in 2003? Four ten. Sorry, four ten. Okay. Four ten. Four ten. Four ten. Okay. Let's use the. Let's do the real GDP now. Yeah. It means that the real GDP you are multiplying the quantities of twenty twenty zero three, of which you have said the quantities are fixed, right? Quantities of twenty zero three times the prices of the base year. Okay. So it will be twenty times the, the base year price is still 10, right? Plus the, 10 times the 15, you get. Okay, the, the quantities are fixed. I will show you the next example have different quantities. So we find the 350, right? As a real GDP, right? Okay, so now to find the CPI, the CPI will be nominal GDP divided by the real GDP, which means it will be 410 divided by what? 350 times 100. Do you get that? And what do you find? 410 divided by 350 times 100. 117%. So minus what? Minus 100%. This will give us 17%, right? It is a positive answer, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, it means that from 2003, 
the price has increased by 17 percent or from 20, zero, from 2000 to 2003 the price has increased by what by 17 percent or the inflation rate was 17 percent did you get that hello hello yes i do So that's Aaron, how you, you that's how you do even the inflation rate as well as the CPI. So the CPI is see, nominal GDP over real GDP times hundred. That is the GDP later. It's the same as the CPI. So it should be fine. Okay. Here is the here is the other one now. We all have got uh, different quantities, okay? The quantities are for the following goods. Are you able to see the person? We have the quantities for the goods, the X, Y, and Z. These are the two goods that we are producing, okay? Then these are the prices for each day. Hello? Okay, so the question is, can you calculate the price of a bundle in, 20, in 2011, 2012, and 2013? The price of a bundle, a bundle of these goods, okay? These goods combined together. So in short, can you calculate the nominal GDPs? Is that clear? Hello? Madam Christine, are you around? Yes, it's clear, Erin. I thought I had I didn't notice I'd muted myself. You can go ahead. I'm here. Oh, okay. So I was saying that see, when the question says, can you price the uh, find the price of the bundle? of these goods in 2011, 2012, and 2013. In short, we are calculating the nominal GDP here, okay? You're using the quantity of the year times the price of the year. For example, let's do the bundle for 2011. I'll, I'll, I'll do the bundle for 2011, then you get the rest. So we can have good X, good Y, and Z. So we are summing up 100 times Z, one, right? One quarter. That is for 2011, of course. 150 times 1.50 plus 25 times 3, right? You sum up these, that is the bundle, the, the price of the bundle, like everything together. What is the total cost of the bundle? It's 400. It's 400. Okay. So that, that is for 20, 2011. Then you can still do for 2012 as well. Let's do for 2012 so that uh, we are fine. So for 2012, again, it will be 100 times now the prices for 2012, which is 1.50 okay. plus for X, for X, the good will be 150 of Y times 2. Plus the other one would be 25 times what? Times 3.25. And what do you get as the nominal GDP as well? I'm getting 481.25. 
no, okay, no, so no, those no. are no, 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 no. That's not no. That's not correct. Sorry. Okay. It's it's actually one fifty plus three hundred plus eighty one point two five. It's five thirty one point two five. Five thirty one point two. Five thirty one point two five. Okay, point two five. So this is it for 2020, for 2012 now. I think you have gotten the idea, you can use it too for 2018. Then the, the consumer price index for 2030, consumer price index using 2011 as the base year. Apa, you're using 2011 as a what? As a base year. Okay, so base let's year. get let's get the Consumer price index for 2012, actually. Let's get the consumer price index for 2012. For 2012. So we we'll need to multiply the quantities of 2012 times the prices of what? 2011, the best year. Isn't it? You're following, eh? mm -hmm. So obviously, it's the same thing. What we are doing, kind of quantities were the same. So it is that one for 2011 that we had. What was the the one we had for 24? Sorry. Mm, is that true? Okay. It's yes, the same the point, one right? The one we had for the best. Oh, the one that we had for 2011, mm -hmm. since we the same quantity. And it was 400, right? Yes. We had 400 for 2011. And then, that is using the prices for 2011. Yeah, that is when you use the prices for 20 for 2011 in 2012. 2012 divided by the prices of what 2011. Now, that is real GDP. Can we do the nominal GDP for 2012? 2012 nominal GDP. The quantities of 2012 divided by the prices of four times okay, the prices of 2012. It's the one that we have found, right? 5 at 1.25 divided by this one. Yes. Then now 100. What do we get? And the three percent minus a hundred gives us thirty three percent. Thirty three percent. Okay, so it's thirty three percent. Yes, so that is that's about. I think you have gotten it right. Okay. Here's the question now. The percentage change in your index between 2011 and 2012. We want the, the percentage change. So now, the way how we do it, the percentage change, we'll write the formula. Uh, just get the index for 2012 and the index for 2013, the CPI. You can get the CPI for 2011 and for 2012. Then to find the change, you say, the CPI for 2012 minus the CPI for 2011, you get divided by the CPI for 2011, for 2011 times 100. It will give you the rate of change. Did you get that? Going through it again. Did you say it? Like you can get, you are going to calculate the CPIs for 2011, 2012, at 2013. Then to find the change between 2011 and 2012, 
you subtract the CPI of 2012 minus the CPI for, for, 20, for 2011, divided by the CPI of 2011 times 100. That's a formula. You get it? So CPI for 2012 minus CPI for 2011 mm -hmm. divided by the CPI for 2011 divided by the CPI for 2013. 11. Is it? 11. Minus the CPI for 2012. Yes. CPI for 2012 minus CPI for 2011. 2011 again. My, divided by CPI for 2011. You are dividing by this number, this last one, times 100. Okay. Did you get it? Okay. Hello. I'm here. Hello? Okay. Um, did you get that? Did you get it? Okay. So that is what you basically do for all of them. And then when you come to, was there inflation between 2012 and 2013? Uh, obviously, what, when you calculate the CPIs, you can see the change, right? The CPI should be able to tell you that from 2012 to 2011, if the price has changed and by what percentage. Is that okay? Okay. Here it is now again. I'm repeating almost the same things if you observe using the different persons. Question number 18. You are given the three years, 2012, 2013, and 2014, right? Different quantities now and prices, okay? Then the question is that, can you calculate the nominal GDP for each year? So if you're calculating the nominal GDP for each year, it is actually the summation of the quantity for that year times the price for that year, okay? Did you get it? For example, for 2012, it will be the quantity for 20. You have 900 times 30 plus what would be 100 times 192, right? You sum all these things. That's nominal GDP. You do the same for 2013, which will be uh, 1,000 as a quantity. It's 1,000 times what? 36 plus what? 100 times 200. Do you get that? Then you do the same for 2014. Those are nominal GDPs. I think that is clear, isn't it? Because nominal GDP, the bottom line is that you, you are using the prices of the what? Of the base year. Then you, when it comes to the real GDP now, Real GDP you use 2012 as a base year. It means that you'll be using the prices of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of 2012, right? Quantities for that year, but the prices of that year, okay? So we can, we can do, I think real GDP for 2013. By the way, the real GDP for the base year is same as the nominal GDP. Okay, the base year is 2012, right? If you are to calculate the real GDP for 2012, it is same as the nominal GDP. Get that point. I say the nominal is equal to the real GDP for that base year. Nominal GDP. Only for that base year. So only for 2012, the real GDP and the nominal GDP will be the same. But for these other years, it will be different. Let's go for 2013. So we are using the quantity for 2013, 1,000 times the, the prices of the base year, which will be paid, right? We'll be using uh, the prices of 24. 
So I have 200 times what? 100. Did you get? We're using the prices of 2012 and the quantities of 2013. We want to find. Why are we using the prices for 2012? Sorry? The real GDP. The real GDP for 2013. Whenever I'm asked to find the real GDP, and I'm. Hello. You're saying something? Okay. Oh, sorry. So each time I'm asked to find the real GDP and I'm given a best year, I should use the prices for the best year. Yes, that is for real GDP. But nominal GDP, you just use the prices of that same year. Okay. I think that is what I explained when I started. When I said the difference between nominal GDP and real GDP. Okay. So that is what you will do. So what, what is the real GDP? For 2013. What is the real GDP? This is 30,000. Let's see. 20,000, it should be 50,000, right? Hello? Yes, it's 50,000. Yes, that is the real GDP for 2013. Can we find yes. now the nominal, the nominal GDP for, 20, uh, for 2013? Let's do the nominal GDP for 2013. So nominal GDP, I said, it is the prices and the quantities of that same year. So you say 1,000 times 2013 prices that one, plus 200 times 102. You get, what is the nominal GDP? This is 1,000. Let's see, what is that? You can do your calculations. 1,400. It's 1,400? Yes, it's 1,400. What is the total everything? Plus this one. Just one to the end. What is the nominal? <laughs> The nominal GDP for 2013 is 1,400. Five one. 400. 400. Okay. Five one 400. This is the nominal GDP. So if you want to find the GDP later now, because I was showing you this because there is a question now which says it, find the GDP later for each year. So for 2013, the GDP data will be given as the nominal GDP divided by what? The real GDP times 100. Okay, that is how we find the CPI. So our nominal GDP, our nominal GDP for 2013 is what? Is 51400 divided by 50,000 times a hundred and what we get. That is the GDP data value. What is the data? One, one, two, three. One, zero, three. Percent. Which is three which percent, right? Increase in prices. Right. So I've already answered also question B or followed. Question C is asking what is the GDP data for each year? Then question D, what is the inflation rate in each year? We just say GDP data is 100. Then that will give you the 
bit. Okay. Did you get that? GDP deflator minus hundred. Yes. CP is same as CPI. The way how we are finding CPI okay. minus hundred. Yes. In this case, if we are saying uh, it will be in better for 20, 2012, 2013, eh? Yes, it is 103. Yes, it will be 3%. It will be 103 minus 100. Yes, 103 minus 100 is 3%. That is the impression now. About that special. What is the change in inflation in each year? So in 2013, the prices increased by 3%. You got that? Hello? If the question is ending on GDP, you just, you just end here. But if it is also asking you to interpret or tell them the inflation rate, you subtract that 100 from that, then you see how inflation, how the price levels have changed, right? So you can, you can basically do the same for these other years, I think. We have done just for one year. You can also do for 2018. Find the real GDP first if it is quantities times the prices, design. That will give you the real GDP for 2014. Okay. Do you get that? And for nominal GDP for 2014, it will be this, this these prices and these quantities just for 2014. That is the nominal GDP. Then you say nominal GDP over real what? Real GDP times 100. Okay. So the nominal GDP is the one that you're going to find. You divide that by real GDP, but try by 100. That is a deflator. That is how to find the deflator. Okay. But if the question is just asking you, find the real GDP. Finding the real GDP, just find the real GDP. There is no need of divide. If you divide like this, nominal GDP over real GDP, you are finding a deflator. That is a deflator. Okay. Hello? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Do you have any questions? Oh, I'm okay. Well, okay. You can always ask us as many as as many questions as possible. Very important. Okay. Okay. By the way, see that we are just doing selected person. Let's see number three. Okay. Number three. Number three is very interesting. Okay. So the question says, uh, what is the, I don't know if you can even see the diagram. They come on there. What is the marginal propensity to consume? Okay. okay. So marginal propensity to consume MPC is found by calculating the change, change in it consumption as a result of change in what in income did you get that that is how you measure the mpc yes. okay because the interpretation is 
MPC is the change in income because of the change in what? In, oh, the change in consumption because of the change in income. Okay. Hello? I'm here. Are you there? Okay. So consumption is 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 in here in is in the expenditure column. So you get the slope. It is the MPC actually is the slope of this line. So consumption will be one two minus what four fifty divided by the change in income of one three minus what minus this three hundred. That is the slope. What is the slope? of the line, that is the MPC. What do you get? Hello. Hi, I'm packing later. I'm asking, what is one four minus four minus 450? Seven fifty. Seven fifty divided by one three minus the three hundred obviously is a thousand, right? So what is the seven fifty divided by a thousand? Okay. That is our MPC. What do we get? Zero point seven five. 0 0.75. So our marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.75. So now, what is MPS? Okay. Obviously, if you have MPC, you can easily find MPS, right? You just say 1 minus 0 0.75. Yes. If you remember what you said, you get 0 0.25. Yeah? Mm hmm as your MPS now. Yes. Then the multiplier, I said that the multiplier is one over MPS, right? Which will be one over 0 0.25. And what is the multiplier? It will be four, right? Is it four? The multiplier is one over MPS. Yes, that's what is, we said. It is one over one right? minus MPS. Yes, yeah, MPC. One over one minus MPC, but one minus MPC is the MPS, right? Yes. So it's four. Yeah. So the multiplier is what is four. Is that okay? Multiplier is four. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I, I I don't mean to solve all the questions. And actually, I am categorical. I just select only the things that you, you need. This, this the way, how these questions are arranged, that they cover everything, even, even those things that were not there in the box. OK. So, but that should not be a problem. You should be able to. Select the persons that you might want me to speak to. Okay. Let's let's do question number five. If you if you are following okay. nicely, we are in national income account, by the way. We are in national income. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we are now in national income accounting. So the consumption function, just as I said it last time, it is given as C A plus C B Y. You remember? Mm -hmm. Where I said A is autonomous what consumption. So our consumption function is 200, autonomous consumption is 200, plus the marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.8 times Y, the output. 
So I said this one, this B last time I was emphasizing, remember in the notes, I said this B is same as the marginal propensity to consume. Mm -hmm. So your marginal propensity to consume is already known, right? As 0 0.8. Yes. Yes. So having known that, what is the marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save? You can answer this question already. This is 0 0.2, this one is 0 0.8. Okay, can you graph uh, equation two and three, not in your context? Suppose equation two is changed to investment one, okay, 110. If investment changes by 110, that's the question. What is the new equilibrium level of income? What is the new equilibrium level of income if investment changes by 10? Okay, so we are solving for income. We're solving for income. Yeah, we are solving for, for income. So what is there is, um, it is said that, eh, check it. Equation four says AE is equal to Y, right? That's equation four. Which means that equation three again says AE is equal to C plus what? Plus I. That is equation three. Equation four. So which means we can replace here in equation three where there is AE as Y. So our Y is equal to C plus I, okay? Which is the same equation that we learned. We learned under the closed economy. The closed economy gives the output as Y equal to C plus I. Are we together? So if you have C plus I, then you are asked to find the Y. They want you to find the level of income, Y. So you have the C, your C is what? 200 plus 0 0.80 times Y, you don't have Y. Then plus the investment, the investment now is 110, okay? Your investment is, is 110. So I, you put 110, what is Y? Okay, madam, are you able to follow? Hello. Hello. Please find me. You're lost. Okay. Let me let me get you uh again. Uh, are you following now? So what is there is you have these four equations here. Okay. So they are saying that. Uh, Equation number equation number three, AE is equal to C plus I, right? Yes. And the equation number E, AE is equal to what? To Y. So we can replace in this equation where there is AE as Y. So we have Y equal to C plus I. Do you get it now? Hello? We are saying that A, E, and Y, they are the same thing. So we have first. So if we have replaced, we say Y is equal to C plus I, then we know the C, right? Our C function is what? 200 plus 0 0.8 Y plus I. Our I, they have said this what? It has changed to 110, right? In the question. Okay, so we want to find the level of income. So we are solving for Y in short. Hi. Hello? Yes, please. So we are saying Y is equal to C plus I, and our C yes. is 200.8. Yes. Then our I, they have said that it has changed to 110. So we have put 110 on I. So plus okay. one ten, yes. 
Yeah. So when you collect like terms together, we have y minus 0 0.8y equal to what? 310, right? 200 plus yes. 110. Then this will be 0 0.2y equal to 310. We divide it through by 0 0.2 and divide 0 0.2 to get y. What is our y? Where are we getting the 0 0.2y? Why? Oh, like it, there oh, is one here. There is one percent of the y. Okay, I get it. <laughs> okay. It is well. And, and what is our y? So our y will be one thousand five sixty five. One thousand five. Five fifty. No, one thousand five. Yes. Like this. Yes. That is your income. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the question is, by how much does the ten percent increase in planned investment change income? So first of all, you needed first to calculate for Y before you could calculate for the change, okay? So that mm -hmm. you can assess why they added the 10. So the question is that when they added the 10, how much did the income change? By how much? So obviously you can just go through this again, but we'll use uh, consumption is 200 plus 0 0.8Y. Plus uh, our income is what? Our investment is 100. We want the initial one, right? I, I just want to go through the initial one. So let's let's get our y. Y minus 0 0.8y equal to 300, okay? Divide 0.2y into 300. What do you get? As our 1, y. 1,500. 1,500, 1, yes. Yes. So which means our income increased by 50, right? It was 150, like 1,550 minus 1,500. So our income increased by what? By 50, 50. You get it? Huh? So just check those deviations. So what is the value of the multiplier? Obviously, you know the multiplier. The multiplier is 1 over MPS, right? Just do mm -hmm. 1 over 0 0.2. And what do you get? You get 5, right? Four. Is it? 5, yes. Yeah. It's 5. Very, very easy, these things. You already know them. And any question? <laughs> I want us to... Uh... I wanted to go through the increase of 10% again on the second part. Sorry? After we found what our Y was, our income was 1,560. The second question, where does that increase? Oh, where is it? The second question. Where it says the, by how much does the, $10 increase in planned investment change equilibrium income. Yes, that's the question we're answering. By how much does it take? The 10. Uh -huh. I'd love for you to just put that out again for me. Oh, okay. So what happened is that at initial, when investment was still one or still 100, our income was what? was 1,500, isn't it? When investment yes. increased by 10, our income was what? 1,500. So the question is that, by how much does income change when you increase the investment by 10? Obviously it increases by this difference, right? You got it? Yes, I have got it now. Okay. So now, on question number six. 
Question number six, given the following data on a simple closed economy, your C is this one, your investment is that, your G is that, okay? Then the question is, can you calculate the equilibrium level of national income? Our national income Y is equal to C plus C, e, I plus G, is it? For the closed economy. Is it what we said? Hello? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our consumption is 0 0.10. This is our consumption plus our I, 20 plus our G is 40. Okay, equal to Y. So we are solving for Y. We're solving for Y. So our Y will be what? It will be Y minus 0 0.75. Y equal to what? Equal to 70. Is it? Hello? Hello? Hello, are you there? Hello? I think your mic is mute. I can't get your feedback. Are you around? Okay. Hello? Hello? Your mic is off. I, I need to get the background if you are hearing. Like can you give me the feedback? Are you are you are you are you able to hear? Me? Hello? No, you're going to spend the TV. No, I know that one. No. I need more to come. I'm busy. Hello? Hello? Hi. Are you back now? Yes, I'm back now. Okay. So this is what I was saying. I was saying in that equation of ours, we replaced these numbers that were given. The equation is y is equal to c plus c, i plus g, okay? Put the value of c is here, the value of i is here, and the value of g is that, okay? Then the, we know that when you do that, we collect like terms together. What has y to the other side of the equation? We have y minus 0 0.75 is equal to 70. We add 10 plus 60 here, 20 plus 40, obviously 60 plus 10, 70. So what is 0 0.25 divided by 70? It's 280. Okay, so our Y is 200 and what? 208, just that, okay? 
Yes. Yeah, it is this straightforward. You don't need to suffer very much. Mm -hmm. So the question was, consumer savings at equilibrium, consumer savings is Y minus C, consumption, okay? Consumer savings will be Y minus C, consumption. Y minus consumption, that's what we said last time. Because it said Y is equal to C plus C, I, right? Oh, minus G, right. Whatever remains is what they say. So you can easily calculate that Y minus C minus G, the remaining, the remainder is what they say, okay? Hello? Yes, Aaron, I'm here. Okay. The value of injections, we said the injections are what? Which ones are injection? It's only the government expenditure, isn't it? In this question. Because we don't have exports, only government expenditure. So you say for uh, just like that, and then you're okay. <laughs> then the other question is the last question is the new level of national income. Why, if G increases to one, increases by one ten, or by ten, G increases by ten, which means it becomes fifty. So your new Y would be C one ten plus zero point. 75y plus investment 20 plus what plus g which will be 50 our g will be 50 because it has increased by 10. you get it right yes i do yes then you you, you repeat the same process so you have uh, 0 0.25 y equal to 50 plus that is 70 80. So what is the what is the our income? What's our income? Eighty divided by zero point two five. That's our income. It's three twenty. Yeah, three hundred and twenty. So that is about it. Any question? No, I'm okay. Are these things difficult to say? No, they are not. <laughs> they are not so in easy. short, you've seen. So I was I was just doing this to show you that you, you can keep on doing these things. What we were saying is that last time. So as for today, we end here. Thank you so much.